Bloxburg's biggest thunderstorm yet is coming our way, and it looks like there's going to be a lot of flooding, especially on Riverside, due to the river already being full from our last rainstorm. Plan ahead, and be safe out there. Hey, did you hear about the thunderstorm? I love thunderstorms. Perfect for some fun activities. Would be a good time to do you know what, right? Ooh, yes, you're right. Let's keep in touch about that. A potty? Oh, you already know it. Overpacking again? Hey now, I thought we had some stuff planned. Mm-hmm. Do you have it all? Yep, every piece of it. Awesome! I'll come pick you up. Yes, yes, I'll be fine, guys. Don't worry about me. I love you too. Bye! Looks like the rain is starting to fall. You think we'll get there before it becomes a hazard? At the speed he's driving? I think I would say yes. Don't worry, I'm a professional. <laughs> Always prepared, aren't you? Of course, never know what we'll need. You okay? I'm fine. How have you been doing lately? I haven't seen you since the unfortunate event regarding your husband. I'm so sorry for your loss. Do you need anything? I know this must be so hard for you. Oh yeah, it's been really tough. I'm so upset. He was just recently promoted in the company and got a huge bonus. We were planning a fancy celebratory vacation, but sadly it couldn't happen. I just can't believe it. I was going to wear the diamond necklace he bought me too. <sighs> what a shame. Maybe this party will change your spirit. We'll see about that. Can I live here? This is fancy. Must be worth a lot. For someone who wears a lot of color, I didn't think this was your vibe. A lady always likes expensive things. Smooth entrance. Someone had to enter in style. <laughs> Hi everyone, so excited to be here. Okay, too much energy for me. I'm gonna go inside. Well, 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 looks like everyone has arrived. Come in, come in. So where's the mayor? I was the first one here. He's late, per usual. But I knew the key was under the porch mat. Is this everyone? I've hosted parties way bigger than this. You call this a Halloween party? Haven't you heard, darling? People arrive late to parties. It's called being fashionably late. What should we do now, anyway? We can't drive anymore. Maybe should we just go home? No, no, we have to go. We don't want to miss this. How far away are we? Not too far. We can probably just walk. So, we're all here. When does the party start? I don't get away from my kids often, so I'm here for a good time. Well, I know I didn't get dressed up for nothing. Yeah, I'm hungry. Let's start with a tour. <laughs> so, who's gonna answer? Not it. Not it. Hmm, I got it. We're here! Gosh, that was a longer walk than expected. Are we late? You walked? I could never. We may or may have not crashed into a tree. Just in time for the tour. Follow me. This is the dining room. Cute tour, uh, but can I eat now? Oh, thanks for reminding me. I was given a list of activities from the mayor for the party. There's a fancy dinner tonight. It says to get dressed and meet in the dining room at eight. Sounds fun. So then we can go put our stuff away. Are the bedrooms assigned? Well, since we all just got here, I say we just pick our own rooms. Before you all go pick your rooms, what would you all like to drink? We have water, lemonade, or iced tea. Water for me. Iced tea. I second that. Lemonade, please. Iced tea? Iced tea, please. Hello? Hello? Huh. We were supposed to wear something nice? I thought this was a Halloween party. At my Halloween parties, we get dressed in costume. Well, 
It's not your party, is it? Everyone's festive in their own way. How do you all know the mayor? I'm Jessica Sawyer. I design his suits for interviews and other events. I'm the best in town. I'm Morgan Sullivan, his secretary. Everything goes through me before it reaches him. At least it should be. I'm his son, but you should know that. Hey, where's the bathroom? Upstairs, down the hallway. There's not one downstairs? What can I tell you? It's a typical Bloxburg home. The architects always seem to forget bathrooms on the first floor. My dad is trying to work on that. Dang. I'm Ryan Anderson, Bloxburg Times journalist, met the mayor through work, and since I've had to interview him for a lot of things, we became close over time. What about you? I'm Meredith, just a family friend of his. You're Hannah, right? Aren't you related to the mayor too? I feel like I've seen you on TV. Wow, I guess I have a recognizable face. Yeah, he's my uncle. Noah and I are cousins. It's been so long since I've seen you, Noah. How are you? Yes, it has. I'm doing... I know he doesn't have a lot of family to leave his wealth to, so I'm glad he has such great friends. Oh my gosh, are you okay? Anyone know the Heimlich? But where's the phone? It's over there. What's happening? Ah! I can't watch this. Victoria! I is he dead? He's... He's gone. Okay, I'm gonna go check the power box. Everyone, don't move and stay calm. What do we do now? Should we bury him? Bury him? Shouldn't we call the police? Are you trying to cover up something that you did? What? I would never. That is exactly what the killer would say. The phone's down. Everything's down. Ah! This is interesting. So you did this? All for entertainment? You killed a human being. Don't come after my friend. Oh yeah? Like you went after Mr. Grant? I don't feel so good. I think I'm gonna be sick. We should probably move him. What was that? This was definitely not an accident. I just fell on a dead body. Guys, it's a kitchen knife. And who's been in the kitchen? The maid! She's the reason we're here. She wants us dead. We need to get out of here. Wait, the power's back on. We can call the police now. Um, the phone is still not working. Ah! The phone line has been cut. Oh, heck no. I better not be next. I have kids at home. Someone slashed all our tires! We're stuck here! Well, no one has left the house except you, so... Excuse me? And the maid! Well, someone had to go outside to see what happened, and I saw that the phone line was cut. Or you cut it yourself. Check her pockets. Um, personal space? Nothing in this pocket. Oh. My. Gosh. Scissors! <laughs> Those are mine. I bought them in my suitcase. I never go anywhere without them because, well, you never know where there could be a wardrobe malfunction. So it was you? No, it wasn't. I swear, the maid is the only person here who we don't even know. To an extent, that's kind of true. I guess if Jessica was the killer, she probably wouldn't admit those are her scissors either, right? Hide the maid up! Don't let her escape! Stop! I didn't do anything! I didn't put them in my pocket! Liar! Ain't no way I'm sleeping tonight! Okay, so we found the murderer, now what? Phone line was cut, everyone's tires were slashed, it's still pouring outside, and we are literally in the middle of nowhere. We wait, I guess. And risk ourselves being killed? I guess we can do something to pass the time. Okay, but it needs to be something where everyone is in the same room. Ooh, that's my cue. I packed just for this. You packed something for a party? You aren't even the host. The letter said it was a party, so I brought a game. Don't go pointing fingers at me, Miss Montgomery. So Rena and I have been wanting to try out this new game that we came up with. It's kind of like Two Truths and a Lie or Truth or Dare, but more intricate. Nerd. Um, hey now, can't say that until you try it. Okay, so each person gets a game piece, then we have our game board. Roll the dice, move the amount of spaces, and depending on what space you land on, you have to answer a question from a certain deck. Then you can either answer it truthfully or decline to make a statement, but you can only get three passes. Once you lose your passes, you have to answer them no matter what. Get to the end and you're safe from answering any more questions. You can't stop answering questions until you pass the finish line. Did you guys come up with this yourselves? Um, did we just forget that there's been two murders? Hello? You gotta be smart to be able to do something like that. Oh, not the side eye. The maid is tied up in the billiard room. We're safe now. We just have to wait for the thunderstorm to stop. Thank you, Victoria. 
Seems pretty intense for a party game. Intense, but interesting. <laughs> that was a good question. Wow, I didn't know you had such an odd hobby. Yeah, well, it's not something I like to share, but I already used up all my passes. Anyone want a drink? Oh, right. Sorry. Um, I can find sealed bottled water. Yeah, that might be safer. Break time? Yeah, sure. Good, because I need to go upstairs real quick. But can someone go with me? Because, uh, you know. I'll come. I'll go as well. Probably shouldn't go in Paris, you know? Let's meet back in five. This place gives me the chills. Yeah, same. Just be quick, okay? Ah! She's dead! The maid is dead! What? I just checked on her! Someone killed her! So she's not the murderer? You are! What do you mean? You're the only one who checked on her, so clearly you killed her. But you, Ryan, Hannah, and Kimberly were those who tied her up. It could have been any of you. Or all of you. This is crazy. Why would I do something like that? The four of us can hold each other accountable. We were all in there together. It had to be you, Paige. Oh, heck no. We aren't doing this pointing fingers thing again. Okay, well, someone has to play detective now, right? This isn't a movie. Obviously, but someone has to take charge of the situation. That's exactly what the murderer would do. Is it you? Seemed a little quick with that accusation, Mr. Anderson. Oh, so now I'm the killer. I don't know, man. You're kind of crazy. Whoa, dude. We're in the billiards room together. What do you have against me? Nothing. I'm just keeping the possibilities open. On another note, Mr. Anderson, what were you doing when we were in the dining room? I was at the table like everyone else. You didn't get up to help Mr. Grant. You just watched him die. Oh yeah? And how do you know that? You ran out of the room. I don't like where this is going. What happened? Please sit. One of us in this room is the murderer. <gasps> so it wasn't the maid? Paige found the maid dead in here where we had her tied up, so there's no way it could be her now. So who is it then? Wait a second. Didn't the maid mention something about the mayor's health? Yeah, his health isn't great. Like the maid mentioned, my uncle doesn't have a lot of family to leave his wealth to, but has a lot of close friends. He has to pass his things on to others when he's gone, so maybe he's writing a will. Oh yeah, doesn't the maid, or should I say, did work for the mayor? You're right, and the maids in the house hear everything. When I'm there taking these measurements for a new suit, there's at least one maid nearby. Word can definitely get spread around. So maybe that's why we're here. To hear about the will. I think we should split up, look for clues, look for a will, I guess. Split up? Are you literally insane? Every single horror movie in the history of horror movies has something go wrong when all the characters split up. Well, do you have any better ideas? Stay with your partner and do not leave each other's sights. Don't you think this is taking too long? What do you mean? Like the whole finding the killer thing, multiple people have already died, which means there's a chance that someone else could too. Well, yeah, but what else are we supposed to do right now, like Morgan said? All we can do is try to solve it. The faster we find clues, the faster we get out of here. You know what I just realized? If one of us is the killer, then they're pretending to help look for clues. Have you found anything? Nothing yet. Ah! What's wrong? What did you find? The curtains! Is there a clue on the curtains? The fabric is hideous, so why would someone put this in their house? You have got to be kidding me. <sighs> Miss Sawyer, you're supposed to be looking for clues. I am, but this just caught me off guard. They need to fix it. Did you guys find something? No, Miss Fashionista over here was screaming about the freaking curtains. Okay, yeah. Those curtains, they're pretty bad. Did anyone find anything? I found this in the library. Mark is still searching though. This must have been torn out of a book. I thought we weren't supposed to leave our partner. He said he would stay behind to keep looking. Not suspicious at all. This paper is about poisoning. The killer must have used it to kill Mr. Grant. Let's get everyone in the lounge, okay? Maybe Ryan and Oliver found something upstairs? Hey, has anyone seen Hannah? Has anyone checked in here? <gasps> Hannah! Oh no. 
She's dead! Why do I keep finding bodies? This is all my fault. I shouldn't have left her alone. Yes, yes, it is all your fault. Actually, Jessica, you were supposed to be there too. Yeah, Morgan. Why do you keep finding bodies, hmm? Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, before we start pointing more fingers, why don't we check the room for clues? Guys, I think I found the weapon. This has blood on it. Don't touch it! Put it on the table! This has gone too far. We've barely found any clues. Yeah, how do we know who is doing this? This has to get figured out before anyone else gets killed. I know who it was. What? After putting it all together, I can't believe I didn't figure it out sooner. It's thought out, but at the same time, luck was involved. Who did it? Let's start with why they did it. The maid mentioned briefly about us all being close friends of the mayor, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Hannah then mentioned later on that the mayor hasn't been doing well, that he must be sick, and how there is a possibility that his wealth would be distributed through a will. The mayor invited us to this party to discuss the will, but we were then told that he was running late. The mayor never showed, and why would he if he's sick? Okay? Maids hear everything, and then they tell other maids. People always talk when maids are around, so they will always hear about the things no matter the topic. The mayor must have been talking about how he needs a will written before he passes. He could have talked to anyone though. Wait, Morgan, aren't you his secretary? Yeah, but wouldn't he discuss his will with... I don't know, a lawyer? Mr. Grant is dead. Yes, and he was the mayor's son. He must have known about the will, but was killed before he could say anything. Well, that means that someone else here knows about the will. Hannah. Again, yes, but she was killed. Well then, who else could it have been? You would think the family members would know before the friends. Mr. Fletcher was his nephew, but he was killed as well. It wasn't me. I'm just his secretary. Whoa, was it, was it her? Are you admitting to it? No, it wasn't Miss Sullivan. Running out of options here, Meredith. Miss Thorne, where were you during Mr. Grant's death? I wasn't near him. I didn't kill him. I ran after Victoria. Exactly. <laughs> what do you mean exactly? She was out of the room. This means she didn't do it. Not exactly. The lights went out when Miss Thorne ran after Miss Montgomery. Though this part of the murder wasn't planned, it was an opportunity. Mr. Fletcher was upstairs heading to the washroom, but on his way, the lights went out. Miss Thorne took her chance then to strike. There was just enough time for you to grab a knife, run from the kitchen, run up the stairs that's next to the kitchen, turn a corner upstairs, and get behind Mr. Fletcher to kill. <laughs> Are you guys seriously accusing me? Yes, and I'm not done. Oh my. Wait, then what about Mr. Grant? He was poisoned. But everyone was in the room, so how was his drink poisoned? It was done before the dinner when everyone was getting ready. Explain. Did any of you hear the phone ring? Well, I did. My room is above the lounge. The only person that was downstairs at the time was the maid who answered the call. This phone call was a distraction. A long enough distraction for someone to go into the kitchen and pour the powder into the drink. But didn't someone have to call? The killer couldn't have done both at the same time. While Miss Thorne was calling from the phone in the billiard room, someone else went into the kitchen. And that is when I was stuck. Someone ran downstairs with her when everyone was getting changed. And how do you know who went with her? Well, it took me a while to figure out, but then it all made sense. And there would need to be an accomplice. What? Two people are in on this? Yes, and when Miss Thorne and Montgomery arrived, Miss Montgomery's luggage was slightly unzipped, but enough to see some of what was inside. I saw something glisten inside her bag when she walked by me, and I realized it was glass. And the evening light had hit it just enough to where I could see that the glass had a crack in it, which means it most likely cracked when the car crashed. Miss Montgomery is a physician which means she knows medicine and other chemicals. During our unfortunate dining experience, I noticed that Miss Montgomery's finger had a cut, which meant she had recently picked up something sharp. Glass, perhaps. The glasses we had during dinner were all glass. I hurt my finger then. <laughs> no, that cut was there before you sat down. I saw when you pulled out your chair to sit. Oh, this is getting good. And how do you know that cut is from the exact glass from her luggage? I went into the kitchen after the kitchen knife was used on Mr. Fletcher to look for any clues. When I went into the kitchen, I saw a trail of white powder along with a shard of glass that had a little bit of blood on it. And that, my friends, is how I knew. Someone else could have got into my suitcase. Oh, so you agree? You had something lethal with you? Wait, hang on. You were playing detective this whole time? No one here thought to consider clues. Seriously? No one else here knows about medicine, besides you and Thorne. Someone else could know and just wasn't saying anything. Hold up, what about 
about the three others? Yeah, so that's where it got confusing. What do you mean? During the dinner party, the maid was in the room with us when Mr. Grant was choking. Everyone was so distracted that no one saw Miss Montgomery slip the pair of scissors into the maid's pocket. How did she get my scissors? You arrived before her, which meant she could have gone into your room before heading down to get the scissors. What about the phone line? When we went into the greenhouse, we found the weapon used on Hannah, but there was also a set of garden loppers. Miss Thorne and Montgomery knew about the greenhouse before we arrived, which meant that they knew what types of tools would be inside. If you noticed, there are two doors to the greenhouse and one has access to the outside. Both of them arrived late, which meant they could have gone into the greenhouse, got the loppers, and cut the phone line before heading inside with everybody else. This is also when the tires were slashed, but they were done with the loppers. Us being late was an accident! There was literally something freaky on the road! I didn't see anything! Yes, you did! You were there with me! You saw it! And because it's the job of the maid to check on things around the house, she knew she was the one who had to go outside to check the phone in the power box. That is why Miss Thorne slipped the scissors into her pocket to make the maid a decoy, which we fell for. The maid died of suffocation. There were no clues there except for the marks on her neck. The killer used the rope tied around her to kill her. And when was that done? Victoria was one of those who took the maid into the billiard room to be tied up. Once everyone else left the room, she killed her. That's it? Yes, it was the opportunity to do it, so she did it. But if the maid wasn't in the will, why was she killed? She was killed because she knew things. If she wasn't killed, the secret could have been out. And that's when it's time to bring up Hannah. She was the next target because she was trying to figure it out. But why were those who died chosen to be killed? Because they were closer to the mayor. Mr. Grant was a son, Mr. Fletcher was a nephew, Miss Sinclair a niece. They are the closest to the mayor out of everyone here. Miss Thorne and Montgomery were going based on priority. Uh, I don't understand. Why would they do it? How did you even know it was them from the beginning? I honestly thought it was Ryan. Excuse me? Sorry, but you're just, I don't know, suspicious looking? Gee, thanks. I'll just say this now. I thought it was Jessica. <gasps> How dare you? I wasn't believing that whole scissor story. Look, I didn't know anything until I saw the soil on Miss Thorne's shoe. Then after putting everything together, I knew it was her and Miss Montgomery. Before the soil, trust me, I thought it was a couple of others as well. Ugh, fine. You got us. I didn't think you guys would figure it out so quickly. I thought I had more time. I didn't even want to be a part of it. You brought me into doing this. Whoa, what? She said she would kill me if I didn't help her. And she said if I did, she would give me a cut of what she got in the will if I promised to keep quiet. And well, I needed the money. You're a physician. You really need a money? Well, I didn't. My family did. The mayor isn't the only one that's sick. Dang, so you wanted to take a sick man's money to help a sick person? That's not weird at all. So, the will is real. You were a part of it? <laughs> yes, it's real. I'm his nurse. He tells me a lot, and because I've been his nurse for a while, he wanted to add me to his will as a thank you. But I knew that if I were to get anything, it wouldn't be enough. I wanted more. And what's your sob story? Oh, <laughs> I don't have one. I just wanted money. Don't we all? So you're the one that sent the letter, and your plan was to kill all of us? Well, <laughs> not all of you. I'm not that greedy. Girl. Kimberly thought if we killed all of you, then it might look too suspicious. Oh, but killing four people isn't? You killed them either way. The maid wasn't a part of the plan, but she gave too much away, so she had to be dealt with. And before you say that you've got us cornered, don't forget, you can't leave the house. So you all better listen to me for what happens next. <laughs> and no screaming. Holy sh- Um... Do we answer? Fine. Answer it. But stay quiet and don't say anything. Hello. We received an alarm notification from the house noting that something happened to the phone line and wanted to come check to make sure everything was okay. Is the mayor here? Is everyone okay? And why are you all dressed like that at 4 a.m. in the morning? Kimberly and Victoria are murderers! I said, stay silent! <laughs> Blocksburg Police, put your hands up! Well, turns out the maid didn't do it, but she did serve a killer turkey dinner. <laughs>